Hello, friends from all around the world. Welcome to the latest installment of Thursdays with Pastor Paul and Mike from the Council of Time. Solar X Today's discussion revolves around the recent occurrence of Solar Flare X class events, with two of them happening in the last 48 hours. These solar flares have disrupted communication networks, causing cell towers and ham radio systems to go offline. This rebroadcast features Pastor Paul Begley's weekly interview with Mike from the Council of Time, where they delve into the impacts of these solar flares and their significance on a global scale. The title of today's content is Episode 28, Thursdays with Pastor Paul and Mike from the Council of Time, Solar X. We are thrilled to bring you this insightful discussion, which sheds light on the spiritual implications of these solar events and how they align with biblical prophecy. Our aim is to inspire you to seek truth and knowledge, which are central to our project's mission. For more great content, please visit Pastor Paul Begley's channel on YouTube and the Council of Time website at the links provided in the description. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our community. We value each and every one of you. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this enlightening episode 28, Thursdays with Pastor Paul and Mike from the Council of Time, Solar X. Uh, join us, folks, from somewhere located somewhere around the globe. It's Mike from around the world. Mike, how you doing tonight? Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got to have a voice here. Hang on. Say that again. Is it okay now? Oh, it sounds great. Okay, doing okay, doing okay. Mike, I'm glad to hear that. You sound better than last week. You were, you... Yeah, I feel better. Yeah, your voice yeah, is, was, uh, your voice, much better. Well, Mike, we've been talking here about these solar flares. You know, these, there's three of them in the last 24 hours. One in the last couple hours, which was Mammoth. It was, uh, you know, we so we had an X-Class 1.8, and then we had an X-Class 1.7, and those might have been what caused all these power outages, I mean, uh, cell phone outages. Um, and then about two hours ago, we just had a massive X-Class 6.3, and this is the largest one in seven years. So you have all three of those in a 24-hour period. I guess my first question is, is this the beginning of a hostile sun due to the binary system uh, that's coming into our solar system? Well, that's a good question, uh, Pastor Paul. So let me explain this. Let me explain this. About, uh, I think it was uh, January. Uh, I put some dates up in January. Yeah, those, yes, uh, you did. Of course, that was on the website. One of the dates was February 20th. And uh, that was, that's been up there a while. The other one is February uh, 28th. So those have been up there for a while. But in order for someone to get close to any solar event yet again like that, well, they must know something about right. some perturber somewhere, right? So right. I'm, I'm, here's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that some sort of credibility with consistency with these dates will we'll put a bit of a foundation for something more that must come forward because although we have lots of problems in this world, our entire solar system will be under siege soon. And uh, it's not really something anybody should take lightly but should be highly aware of. Um, which Please. is why I suggested that webinar with, uh, you know, BP and all those individuals who know about uh, Nibiru, some people call it, or binary system is what I know it by, and uh, solar events and, and the like, because we're going to have to deal with that more and more this year, and it will be devastating at times. So I'm, I'm hoping... Uh, that some sort of credibility can be established in that in that area, because it's very difficult to believe, Pastor Paul, when you're talking about something the world does not cover. Uh, right. You're talking about a subject that most people don't understand. For example, you have amateur astronomers and those who work with JPL and all these different guys. Whenever they begin to figure their calculations dealing with uh, celestial mechanics and and uh, gravitational pool, this, that, and the other, 
there is still a lopsided inertial tug on our solar system coming from one side. And the only way to explain that is a large gravitational pull coming from out there in space. The only thing that would ever have that power to sustain it of that long, we're talking about since the time of Voyager. The only wow. thing that would have that type of mass to do that uh, would be a binary twin, but not one, you know, it's not textbook, no, but it would have the mass to offset some of you know, some of the formulas they have to adjust for. Even, even uh, you know, this, this small flight that went to the moon, may, that, that was an autonomous vehicle. And autonomy is very important because it can make adjustments on the fly. Which is, is it? Are very you important. so? Are you saying that this moon landing that just happened this evening is something to do with Nibiru? Uh, uh, no, no. What I'm saying is, is that the forces that are acting on our solar system are so strong that they have to make uh, they have to have craft with autonomy where they can make their own decisions. I see. And when they're flying in space, so they can make adjustments, right? Yep. Or they wouldn't make it. They just wouldn't make it. Uh, so as this force becomes stronger and stronger, it definitely will mess with a heliosphere is what it's doing right now. And of course, any weak spot in the heliosphere will demand a response from the sun. It's a very intricate system. Think of it as a cell wall, right? If your cell wall and any of your cells are penetrated, your body is going to react. The sun and the heliosphere are the exact same way. Right. Even as far as ratios, uh, the creator made the ratios of this solar system that we're in, just like the human cell. It's amazing. It's quite amazing. But um, the sun is is becoming active in very predictable ways. Let's but talk about that. So just, let me let me. There's a known perturber out there. OK, so let's let's uh, back up for um, just a moment for some of the audience who may be the first time they're here or don't know what Mike is saying. Mike has given us dates going back, I believe, in uh, November or certainly in December, December, January, into February. He's given us several uh, specific dates of events that were going to happen with the sun or affecting the sun. And we've seen those dates come to pass one after another, and uh, now this massive, this insane three solar flares in a 24 hour period, you basically, you predicted this again. Um, and you're saying is we have to build some credibility of what you're talking about by setting dates and then showing people when things are happening so that when you explain why it happens, people won't just say, oh no, I don't hear these crazy idiots. When, because you're not going to hear this right. from the mainstream media. Is that right, Mike? Yeah, right. They're not going to cover that. They can't cover that. Because if anybody ever knew that uh, if it were true in the, in the mind of the populace, nothing, no civility would be maintained uh, to this point. Everybody would take their own future in their own hands. And, they, you know, it would become a, a virtual, you know, it would be real chaos in the world. So... Nobody could, should ever look forward to that. People will have the effects on the tops of their heads before they admit anything. They're wow. just not going to do it. And don't you find it strange that um, we have those flares, of course, right? Now, the, the actual cell phone event, the, the cell phone yeah. with the networks is strange. Let me explain one thing. For example, AT&T, starting at 3.30 a.m., which was uh, one of the first network flip bit problems. Um, you had a series of phones go down there. Here's what that means. You could be in your house, your phone could go down, Heidi's could stay up, right? Or your sons could go down and somebody else's could stay up. Uh, this was happening all over the place, which suggests that it was some sort of batch outage. Now, what I mean by that is, when cellular, uh, phone, all cell phones have an ID, right? So they have a unique signature, so to speak. And it was certain batches of phones within those ID lots that were going down. This was with AT&T for the most part. Now they handle 
government emergency communications also AT&T does okay which means soldiers out in the field utilize some of that network and there was a knowing there was a knowing but um when that network went down some of the individuals from for example T-Mobile Verizon all these guys they their servers were routing the calls but nobody could reach any AT&T network and wow. some of their calls began to you know was jammed up so i would say that was more you know i'm not definitively saying this because i can't even if i knew what it was i still can't say it but i would say this was more of an internal issue they had to handle which could have come from an external source so it could have been a hack of by one of the major players uh, nations here in the world right now we're, and hacking is not like it used to be you know it's, it's not always somebody external uh from the u.s trying to get to the u.s we have real problems here in the u.s now where people right. that are part of corporations and companies hate the usa in their minds the usa is gone and they will take these irrational actions uh to do certain things so they quickly had to swap everybody over to a different uh network so they can work the other system they will find the absolute cause they will find the signatures uh they've isolated the drives and the equipment that you know that was affected by this but it, it's just it's odd it would all happen at the same time almost like somebody was taking advantage of yeah. any type of event to strike yeah, and, and, and here's the thing I, th I thought of earlier today, is I, and I think I told Heidi this, I said, it's as if there's some probing going on. They, they, they could have really taken down the, the cell phone systems, the GPS systems, everything. But it was like they were just probing to see what they could do when they want to do it. And, t and they took advantage of the solar flares that were erupting on the sun as a good time to test it. Is that, I mean, we've seen probing going on with the Iranians and Hezbollah. And, yeah, they probe. You know, the yeah. Russians do a lot of probing as yeah. well, and China, and we do a lot of probing in the United States. So do you, is that what my, we might have been seeing, a little probing going on internally or even externally? We could have. We could have. The most, the, the, one of the most disturbing things about it is not the communications. Uh, it is the way that people reacted to it is what is the information they gained yeah. right from the reaction from the news because i intentionally looked at every single news organization to see what they were going to say now these guys had genuine questions and all of them said the same thing they said well could it be from the solar flame right which means they did not know right, right? they didn't know at&t could not give a response quick enough the white house got involved they wanted to know what happened. Uh, okay, so our enemies were also watching the same news channels that everybody else yep. watches, right? Yeah. So they too were gauging this. What's so dangerous about this fastball is that communications causing that type of reaction lets anybody out there understand and know that we 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 have gotten a little too arrogant concerning technology, a little too comfortable, right? Yep. We have a power grid. And each, each network in a power grid is isolated. Nobody can really hack into it unless they arrive at their own station. If that were to happen with a power company, it would send everything, everything would be upside down. Plus, if they were able to do that with a uh, power plant, so speak, it'd only be about a couple of hours before we had a meltdown. Now, unlike other times that we've been in, because most of these nuclear uh, facilities have it altered if they did have a meltdown which could take place in about a couple of hours and it would be irreversible you're talking about a radius of about 100 miles to i say one to 1000 miles of an actual kill radius right wow you're also looking at more than that the radius of, of uh, sickness and things like that right we have some very vulnerable issues within the u.s and we have this at a time where the populace is not quite loyal to the U.S. In other words, we have people in this house yeah. called the United States of America who hate the house. Yes. Right? Yes. And things are becoming unhinged. 
And this should, uh, whether the Lord allowed this to happen, whether somebody did this and it was some nefarious activity, whether somebody hacked it and it was a foolish act or some equipment broke down, it demonstrates our lack of resolve when needed. It really does. Civilian and government coordination is not high enough to overcome this problem quickly and efficiently enough, right? They should have restored communications within a couple of minutes. There should have been a redundant backup to handle communications easily, right? So only a few people should have noticed that outage. That wasn't the case. It began at 3.30 a.m. Even AT&T did not recognize the outage until a specific website which people report to saying that there are services out. Wow. They took a look at it. They verified. So we have a problem. We yeah. Have a big, that's a problem. Well, that's a, a lot problem. of, Mike, a lot of the 911 uh, emergency systems didn't work. And then this is a huge problem. Now that everybody's got off the landline and have went to cell phones, this is a, and but when the 911 uh, in major cities wasn't working, this is catastrophic. Yeah, there are 4G um, uh, uh, delayed networks there or, or secure networks there. And so when the AT&T's routing system went down, right, when they actually route calls, that was it. Because every single call has to be routed somewhere. A computer a set of servers handles that. The, but again, the big problem was you had you had uh, certain government facilities that had problems, Pastor Paul, right? Yep. That's, that's a no-go. Certain military installations were affected by the AT&T outage. Wow. Of all the companies, AT&T was the big one. That is the wrong company to be able to, you know, get to. Right? That can, you, that can, that's, communications company could do us in. Yeah, so that's AT&T. where we, we kind of feel that the probing uh, from some uh, actor, a uh, nefarious actor, whether it's somebody right here, several people in here, it wouldn't be just one guy hacking on a computer. I mean, this is an, a highly orchestrated event, whether it's from exterior nation or someone or the, a group inside. This was no, uh, you know, lucky hacker. Right. I, I, and sadly enough, if this was an attempt to, to, to probe, to see what the reaction of the U.S. was, I believe they got too much information today right which i it also means that they could easily uh diverge our attention to small things like that while they do something else wow we, we have vulnerabilities yes we do. We do. yes and we're unfortunately uh people are not coming together to handle that right well let's talk they're, about they're yeah, not. let's talk about some of the things that's happening right now we can look at the middle east and we can look in russia the the fact that the uh, United States, thank God, the president of the United States held on to his veto power and did not let a vote come up to divide the land of Israel in a two-state solution. Uh, but boy, we're hanging on by a thread here. And now Benny Gantz has made the statement that uh, if you want this, uh, if you don't want to have us attacking Rafa during Ramadan, you better right now turn over all the hostages or we're coming. Uh, I, I think that that is a serious, that could blow things sky high in the Middle East. What's your thoughts? Well, it's the, the tensions in the Middle East um, in the last 28 hours has increased. It's quite, the atmosphere is quite thick, right? Yeah. A lot of uncertainty. And the situation, uh, again, it's a bit worse than what anybody would report. Right. There, there's a, a legitimate worry with commanders and folks like that who are over there that uh, yeah. there's a, a massive underestimation of things. But I personally believe that uh, Joel chapter three, yep. we're about to see Joel chapter three. Yep. And because they're going to, in my opinion, this is my opinion, they, they're going to part that land. Yep. They're going to part, they're going to force it. I agree. They're talking more and more that they want to disarm Israel. They, they're they're yeah. calling Israel a Middle Eastern terrorist organization. <laughs> is what they're That's calling crazy. It. That's crazy. But just and what Iran you're saying. Has, Iran has overwhelming support. Right? I know. Not only that, Pastor Paul, but you have NATO. They're ready to act outside of the USA. 
That's not looking for us. Okay. Well, now, is that because we don't have the leadership that we used to have? I mean, when NATO starts saying, look, we can't wait around for Joe Biden or the Americans, we're going to have to take the ball and run with it ourselves. Is this, I mean, this is a, this is a shift of the global order, isn't it? Yeah. That, yeah. It's, you know what, if you look, it's been slowly but surely, it's kind of like Saudi Arabia, right? And Iran, Iran doubled their income with Saudi Arabia who double dealt with Jordan and the USA and Israel, right? And Russia. Yeah. So they've been triple dipping, but they've made so much money past the ball, right? Uh, Saudi Arabia is spending the equivalent of about $4 billion every three days on projects. <laughs> okay. That's a lot of money. Okay. So, but, but it's not hurting them because they're also feeding Iran. See, they have back channel alliances that they deal with. So these guys... Uh, they're, they're talking one way. Believe me, they're working on something else. Right. And their attitude is turning hostile uh, towards Western culture, Western things, which is just like prophecy. But we're going to see an escalation in that. And China, by the way, China is becoming highly aggressive uh, in what they're doing. And so, you know, we're going to have to make a move at some point. For example, CERN, that facility CERN is not is no longer, you know, it was one of the biggest machines on the earth, right? Right. Not anymore. China has that beat. China unveiled something to a degree, not, not to the whole world, but they unveiled something. They have a facility that is twice as big as CERN, right? It sits about 1.3 miles underneath the earth. It is, Pastor, it's huge. What? And these guys, for some for somehow they have, they have copied uh, crafted the equipment they need to harness a lot of dark matter. A what? Lot of dark. I mean, a lot of. I'm not talking about a little bit. Right over the course of years, no. A lot of dark matter. They have actually successfully blanked out some of the neutrino noise that's necessary to hear or, or to actually observe dark matter by way of calculations to extract. And, and they're going to do it. They're working on that right now. And these guys started this project not too long ago, right? So they're doing it. They're also digging a hole right to the core of the earth. All these correlate. So China does not have time to wait on everybody else. And their aggression factor is scaring the admirals of our Navy. So are you saying a one, and, one mile and a third in the into the earth they have built a machine bigger than the cern and day and yes. over in, and yes. is it another cern another it's a it's another collider right it's a much bigger device it does it it um you know they don't have the regulations that everybody else right, has so right. they have just up the ante what about this thing. boring a, a hole in the heart of the earth i mean what's the purpose Same thing russia did okay you remember Russia? Russia was boring that hole. Yeah, I do um, remember that, yes. Well, they had to close that hole, Pastor. They had to. They had to. Okay. Not only did they reach an impenetrable barrier where diamond bits, diamond titanium bits could not penetrate. I mean, it could not. Uh, but other things were taking place. Spiritual? run into that same problem. Okay. In the March, right? S but they have a plan to go past it. Because they've been doing a lot of exploratory um, research concerning the depths of the earth. And um, these guys are not going to stop at that impenetrable barrier. They, they have looked beyond that already, right? It's an, you know, China's doing so much. That's why we had to get that craft on the moon. And we had to get that craft on the moon in a spot where China has already claimed. They already claimed that spot. You know that, right? <laughs> so expect some sort of moon war coming out of this. Well, I did. I do expect that because I know China is trying to claim the moon almost uh, for their own. And, and, and oh, by the way, Iran's claiming the Arctic uh, all of a sudden. So um, there's a lot of well, uh, territory it, snatching. It's not high. China's been to the moon four times, successfully landing a craft, four craft up there that are working in tandem to do things on the moon right now. Uh, this is our first successful landing. I would have to get, because one a couple weeks ago, it failed. Uh, we, had, we had two more before that, they failed. And so essentially the US is contracting 
civilian companies to build them, you know, the equipment, uh, and they they kind of guide it up there, so to speak, with the co-op because they want to get up there pretty quick. So they're going to the moon again, but we may have, you know, if, if they can, I don't know. That depends on what happens on Earth. We are in a pickle. We are, and it's destabilizing quickly. So let me ask you a question: as as the, as the war rages on in, in Russia and Ukraine. And like you said, with Israel, there's so much on the table there. Um, the we uh, the the question is now: Russia took over the that one city, the big city. They're taking over villages and towns. I'm understanding that they have captured hundreds of Ukrainian soldiers, as made them POWs. Uh, is and Zelensky looks like he's running out of gas, and, and the wheels are starting to come off. Do you think? Putin will continue to force to take the whole country? Uh, do you think Europe is going to cut their losses, NATO countries? Uh, or what do you see happening here? Well, Europe was waiting on the U.S. to see what our Congress would do, right? Yeah. We are effectively stalled. Yeah. We're stalled. And there's certain you know, elements to know that we're stalled. The Ukraine has been losing, unfortunately. I know a lot of people, they don't see it that way, but they've been losing. Yeah. And uh, although a lot of people have been evacuated, many people do go to the Ukraine to fight for that cause. Putin is not going to give up. He's not going to stop. He's not going to back down. He's going to continue to go forward with that until he restores um, what he believes is Mother Russia and all of its all of its territories. The, He's willing to do what's necessary to make that happen. Well, Mike, that that would include the Baltic states. All of its territories. Poland, Romania. Yep, all of its territories. So it's all so them. NATO knows this. NATO knows oh, yeah. that and Putin yes, is do. is is not flinching. And when Tucker Carlson interviewed him the other day, he didn't look like a man that was on his last leg. He didn't sound like a guy who didn't know what was going on. Um, the, once KGB, always KGB, the way I see it, uh, he's on a, he's on a mission, right? Yeah. The media lies, Pascal. They, they, they buy propaganda. They painted a picture as though Putin was this, you know, had become frail and senile. And by the way, he died like four times, according to media yeah. stories. Yeah. Uh, so they just, you know, they continue to lie with that propaganda with these, but they don't, I guess they don't understand that hurts the situation because that fuels Russia to do much more. Anyway, he's, he's very vibrant. He's very in control yeah. of his faculties and he's going to continue to push down that door uh, to the Ukraine and more. And his warnings are real and he is prepared to use uh, greater weapons. Now, when NATO makes their decision, Pastor Paul, and we have committed troops to certain ground activities, um, in or near the Ukraine, he will use higher yield weapons. He will. Wow. And everybody is getting, they know that. Everybody knows this. They're getting positioned for that. Now, just so everybody has some clarity, what that means is over there in that region, it will begin to explode everywhere. People here in the USA, they will see Israel in great duress. They're going to see Israel in duress. They're going to see the Middle East in duress. And we may see that for you know, uh, uh, based on that war for some time without it actually being able to penetrate us. But at some point, we'll be drawn into. So but let's talk you know, about. There's time for that. Yeah, let's talk about Israel. You made the point that you believe this is Joe 3, and I do too. Um, I, I honestly, this is the Joel 3 prophecy. The whole world's being brought down to the Valley of Jehoshaphat, and God is pleading with the world don't do this. You don't want to do this. But they're going to do it. I think Jesus gave us that clue in Matthew 24 when he said, when you see this, you better flee. You, Jews are living in Judea. You better get out of there. Don't even get stuff out of your house. So it's coming. I mean, we're. do you see that event? Do you see oh, yeah. this thing coming to yeah. a head in the next uh, 12 months? Pastor Paul, I could, it, that could explode, right, at, at, a, at, at this year. It can really yeah. happen this year. And, you know, speaking of that scripture you brought up, it's the only time Jesus ever told anybody to run. Yeah. Right? You're right. It's the only time. And if, and if 
Christ tells somebody to run, well, they might want to think twice about that. And, and of course, in Joel, one of the more notable passages, at the end it says, they have scattered among them, uh, they have, um, yep. let me read the whole thing. It says, um, I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. Yep. And parted, parted my, my land. land. That's past tense. That's past tense. So that means they did it. Yes. Yeah, they parted the land. So that means if, for that prophecy to come to pass, they're going to go ahead and make their decisions. They're going to force Israel to do what, what they're talking about right now. And, uh, yeah, I think the this last, be I think that what's happening now that uh, it's coming down to the United States. We're, we're the last veto. And then once they do vote on the floor of the General Assembly of the United Nations, which could be this September, let's say, um, they're going to force it. The only way you can disarm Israel is you have to cut off the funding. And that's the United States. So if the United States cuts off the funding or the uh, the artillery or the you know the, the technology, they basically can disarm Israel. Am I correct? And here's the bad news. Here's the bad news. You ready? Yep. They have already cut the funding to the Ukraine. Without, yep. Without, without, uh, the president didn't make that. This is all in the hands of Congress. Right. right? Somebody inside the, the the White House, somebody inside Congress, passed on is not working in the best interest of the USA. They're working, they're doing everything NATO dictates. More specifically, they're doing everything France dictates. <laughs> Are you serious? All you, have to do, all you have to do is everything France declares. Are you serious? Because right? that, they're I mean. They're standing against or for things. See, this, I, you know, I don't get into politics. But right, 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 right. People in Washington. They have three faces. The people see one face, and it's the face that they want people to see. Then they, there's a much darker face. And all you have to do is, is really watch foreign moves, and you'll see them matched only by a small group of people, sometimes, most often, word for word, as though they're handed a script and they will not move from it. They attempt to portray this in the favor of the people, right? That's not going to work out so well. And when people finally find out, it's going to be too late. They're blind. I, I think that many people can't see it right now because we have too many internal distractions. Right? Yeah. President Trump and this, um, you know, the prosecution of him and his family and his corporation businesses. And so how do you feel about that, Mike? How it's do you a feel? Huge about, distraction how, for a lot. Of well, people. how do you feel about that personally? I mean, well, with the way what? he's being treated. Oh boy, I, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. People are always going to have, in politics, they're going to have their feuding and their fights, right? Yeah. But my biggest problem is the people. Okay, here's why I say that. When you, people claim they care, it's thrown in my life, then nothing can change my attitude but him, Amen. right? Everything else is subsidiary to him. Amen. But far too many people give money too much power. And it's time that be reversed, right? That's Amen. why people withhold things. I can almost feel it in me. The people, they, I don't know what it is, Pastor Paul. They, they are. Well, is some of it fear? They allow it. It's, it's a lack of faith. That's first of all. Yeah, it's, it's, time, something is getting them. And, and, there, it's, and it's also it's, the faith is being replaced with the fear. Fear of what yeah. might happen to them. I mean, let me say this. Politically, and I don't right now, is really in this uh, vice. They're in a vice. And they're not sure which way they should go they're, because they're afraid. Um, at some point, they got to make their decision. And I think if people would just listen to the Lord, they would know exactly what to do. But sure they people would. just won't. Um, so you see this escalating even worse than the chaos? Yeah. They're not going to stop until uh, they, they accomplish what they want to accomplish. But, uh, and as, you know, to be fair... There were some unreported uh, casualties involved, right? And it really hit close to home. People are wild. They really are. For example, somebody could say something that is benign in nature and somebody else can hear it and take it to the extreme and act on it. And that's what we face here. Not everybody is sane enough, right, to hear right. certain things. And in this case, people did die. They did not report it, but people did die. 
Uh, you're talking about congressional members who had folks who died, and they are unforgiving in that area. So they're going to go after everything they can go after, right? Which is, by the way, is not going to... This thing that people do when they say, you know, we need justice. Right. I hate to tell them the justice that man has is not going to bring anybody back. It's not going to solve their issues. It's not. It never does. Um, the Floyd issue, right? All that justice did absolutely nothing. It didn't yep. do anything. Didn't do anything. And, and because there is no justice that man can give that can suffice somebody you know, being taken away. They, they have to really look into truth itself. And I'll say it again, for some reason, there's a there's a thickness spreading all over the earth that's blinding quite a few people. Well, you we think it's, a, get to them. it's sort of like the strong delusion that the Bible talks about in Thessalonians. Uh, is it the beast kingdom, the new world order? I mean, the you know, the yep. one world government? You Absolutely. Can, it's, Absolutely. I mean, what do you see? How do you see it developing, Mike? The, Don't lie. Basketball, look, look, well, <laughs> let, let's break it. Let's break it because people know about the mark, right? Right. They know. People know about cryptocurrency. Yes. Right? Yes. Those who are in the cryptocurrency probably need to look into who just bought up billions of dollars. Well, they're buying up billions of dollars every single day in, in Bitcoin, right? They yeah. need to look into folks like BlackRock and all these different individuals and these large corporations that are now buying up Bitcoin. Hopefully, they can equate that they're not doing this just for the fun of it. No, they're not no, doing that. No, no. Uh, a long time ago, we discussed they're going to utilize that system, right, the Bitcoin system, because foreigners are involved in that. It has become one of the main currencies of a couple of nations, and they're going to make that permanent here, which means, Passball, here it is. You ready? I'm not making a financial prediction. I'm just relaying something. Okay. They expect Bitcoin. Right to go up to two, uh, I think the the, the uh, term was two hundred, two hundred and ten thousand dollars per coin. Wow! I mean, it's right now it's okay. like fifty two thousand. They expect. Okay. Okay. So, ex so a lot of people because it's about to be a very rare coin, right? Right. I'm sure that people are going to go back who are involved in Bitcoin and look at this. And when you find out what I'm saying is true, uh, don't make any financial decisions based on this i'm just telling you some things that i know from the inside and so you have a lot of big players uh jumping in right and they will effectively because they can't control bitcoin right now right no and if you can't control bitcoin and anybody can get rich you cannot govern who has power who does not however if you start buying up a bunch of wallets you get in there and you have the largest um you know, you, you own the largest shares and you start buying it up to the point where mining becomes redundant because you're going to have the coins, right? Where they become a rare coin. You, and if you own that larger wallet, you can effectively manipulate anything you want to legally because every financial decision you make is going to affect everybody else. Yeah. And all the other coins are tied to Bitcoin. This is what's happening because they're getting ready for the mark. They're getting ready to consolidate so, Everything. so the dollar, so the dollar's got to die, doesn't it? And and is well, it, is well, bit there is it's going to be replaced? Okay, yeah, that's what I mean. It's it's going to it's lose its power. The the world won't be operating off a of petrol dollar. It's going to shift. Maybe Bitcoin is the bridge to this new currency, or maybe Bitcoin is this new currency. I don't know, but it's leading us to the mark of the beast. Oh yeah, it's definitely doing that because they're going to take. Everybody who has any type of, uh, if they have, you know, money other than, uh, you know, some of your precious metals. But if they have money and they're used to living their life, they're going to continue to do that for as long as possible. Right. So what they'll do is they'll get people used to a different way of exchanging their money. This was a program that uh, I think I discussed this in 2001, I believe, because I saw a SOP. Kind of like a notebook, right? And it began with bank cards. It began with the banks. Uh, the banks had, you know, certain SOPs they had to follow, uh, a certain narrative they had to follow. This was followed up by, right? Because we had the Patriot Act back then, all that stuff. The banks had everybody used to not carrying cash. Right now, the average person does not carry cash. They don't right. use cash like they used to. 
And so they got everybody used to digital um, transactions. So the phones, because they're so fun to play with and you can track things instantly, most people trust the software now. They can see their amount of money and they're good with that. Well, about 15 years ago, that wasn't so. People were not comfortable with with seeing a dollar figure on a phone, right, with their money in Right, no. Uh, but now they are. They're totally confident. And so people have a vested interest in digital currency if they just don't know it yet. And when they take away the, the, the availability of cash, right, it will effectively change. It's going to be a... It's going to be a, very a, a shift, end, right? Yeah. Something that people are going to want because we're going to have a hacking problem. It's going to scare all of us to pieces. Yeah. And that's going to make it easier to shift the pub, public into a Absolutely, cashless society. They're not going to lose their money. Right. They're tied to that money passable. And somebody, imagine somebody, um, uh, some bank is compromised and people start losing money. Right. Yeah. And they have real trouble from that loss where they're going to demand that somebody have better security. So they pay the money back. Right. And then they apply the patches, do whatever they have to do. And they roll out the new security. System. Yep. And right. everybody. And Once I, that security system is in play and people are told, hey, you never have to worry about hacking ever again. Uh, they're going to love it. And because they don't have to take the mark initially, they're going to get it, get used to it. Once they're used to it, they're going to say, hey, in order for you to keep this. Yep. You gotta get this mark. Yeah, I and I and uh, that's people are gonna gladly do that. Yeah, no, this is what I and you what you just did, the scenario is exactly what we've been looking at. Is they will bring out this new currency, this new system. People will everybody will jump in because it, it'll be the system. But then there will be the day when you for you to keep it, you have to deny Jesus Christ. There, nobody gets tricked into the mark of the beast. I Never. Agree. I mean, people go in full-throated, wide-eyed, no doubt about it, have to make a decision. And um, there will be people who will make the right decision, but there will be millions, I mean a gazillion, people who will not do the right thing because they have no more faith. They don't believe there's a God. Part, don't you think, Mike, part of the, part of the deal is there, that we're being inundated with a godless society, uh, a, a society of that course. is demonically of charged. Of course, and I, you know what, Pastor, I've never seen anything like it. You have folks out there that are they claim the love of the Lord, right? Right. But they will not take a step in that direction of faith. They need some sort of compensation to feel like they're getting something in return, but they want no part of it. And then you have more and more people coming out saying, "Well, I just, I, I just never believed in the first place. I can't do this." Then you have folks like, uh, well, high representatives who claim that they're Christian, but then on secret recordings, they're cursing out everybody. Right. That's not working out either. No. So they don't, their real faith is, is, uh, more of a, you know, some sort of a, uh, to, to appease their conscience for the moment. But again, you have a lot of people, the dividing line for the mark and everything else is going to be the dollar passed ball again. If people do not learn, how to give things away. They're going to be in trouble. Yeah. And I you, really think that's key. A lot of people, they if I pass ball, if I were to give you something and you get it and three weeks later, I check on you and say, well, how's it doing? Is it okay? You, you know, you're treating it. Well, that's not giving you anything. That's a lot. No, that's, that's and kind of, of buying some way. Right? <laughs> they loan them. Yeah. When you give something away, when you give somebody something, if I were to give somebody something, I want them, because it's theirs, it's no longer mine, I'm not right. going to check on it, do anything else, I want that to work for them. And I think that even even with the Lord's children, they have to learn how to really to really give. Because yeah. when you really give, there's no jealousy, no envy, no, you don't have that thought that I make a mistake, should nope. I, shouldn't I? Because no. you're giving to God. Because you're totally giving to God. Give, right? Yeah, when you give and to God. that with everything they do, Pass Paul, yeah. with their love. Right? With their love, with their servitude, uh, feeding their families, with their children, their spouse. Every, it should be with everything. It should be yeah. a practice that should be in us. And I guarantee if anybody ever does that, their spirit is going to, all these missing gaps that people have in their lives, that place they can't reach spiritually is going to be filled as soon as they do that. But for a yeah. lot of people, that's holding them back. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And, and, uh, it, it's it's hurting them so much spiritually if they understood the power of giving 
and and the, and when you give, you give unto the Lord. Okay, you have to understand you're giving to God. You're letting go, and you're letting God take control. And then you can't outgive God. You, it's impossible if you tr- if you believe that Bible and truly believe that God is the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him, which is what you're saying. Then you have no problem in obeying God giving to God and trusting God to supply your every need, just like he said in the scripture. Let me ask you this question, Mike, because as this, Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me before this evil and adulterous generation, I'll be ashamed of you before the the presence of my father and his holy angels. So part of this uh, is people are gonna have to get themselves in position to not be ashamed to tell anybody and everybody that they are a servant of Jesus Christ, that they love him, and they, you know, that they are following the Lord no matter what. You have to get in that mind frame. I mean, really, you do if you're going to be a born again believer in Christ. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you know what the Lord does the rest? He's the one that said he'll finish the work he began in us. That's right. Right? So so I don't have to finish anything, but I do have a commitment to going forward. I don't have a verse. I used to have a reverse. Not anymore. I have forward. But you know what, Pastor Paul, by doing that, by going forward, the joy came. The joy was never <laughs> there. Until you start right. going forward and you're not looking. See, I have no backup plan. Right, because there is no other plan. Faith, you have no backup plan. That's right. right. There is no, no other plan. plan. That's right. Folks with a backup plan, they're going to deviate. And this is not the right time to deviate because we have the earth is changing. A lot of people want to know, how can I protect my family? I'll tell you what. You might want to sow some seeds of mercy, some seeds of grace, some seeds of love in your garden, because everybody's going to have to eat from their garden they're planting every single day. And I've noticed something in life. You will eat of your garden sometimes at the wrong time, right? But if it's something good, you can have it all the time. When the enemy is in the land, uh, those who sowed mercy or reap well, mercy yeah. from their enemies. Absolutely. The Bible, Absolutely. Their enemies. Absolutely. So all maybe right. some the enemy come over, get everybody else but take care of you. Absolutely. You. Yeah. you it, it, that's that's because that's the law of God, and that's how it that's will right. work. Uh, Mike, going forward, we got to talk about this. Uh, the terror victims in, in the Israeli attack, they're suing the Associated Press um, yeah. because the members of the Associated Press were embedded in this attack. Uh, yes, they were. You know, so uh, we already have a bad problem. We don't trust the press because we can't. They lie so much to us. But what does this mean, uh, you know, when Israel is saying, hold it a minute. And it's not just the press. You know there was others involved in opening the gates. Somebody uh, had to have turned out the power, turned off the cameras, did something to allow this unbelievable assault on the nation of Israel. Well, you know what, Pastor? They were over there. They, many of them lived right there in that area. Right? Yeah. Um, one of the guys who died, he lived with them. He knew about what they were about to do and he didn't tell a soul he was there to record he was there to document which i do listen if, if you're a reporter working for a u.s based com- uh, company right. right you don't follow the enemy into the camp of an ally not saying oh, that that is treason I, it, that's right, right. That's, that's treason. treason that's what that is because Getting your favorite shot for a corporation is no excuse for allowing people to be mutilated like they were, right? Uh, in at any on any degree on any level. So, in my opinion, that's absolute treason. And uh, but you had a lot of those people. In fact, you have a lot of people right now in the enemy's camp doing the exact same thing. And these corporations are concerned about the almighty dollar yeah. rather than the lives of people. Oh, yeah. Them, oh, right? yeah. They want, they want their credit. They want their ratings and everything else, and they'll do anything to get them. So it really displays that these guys report to get the confidence of the people so that you can continue to see them and pay for them. That's the spirit of murder. The lives of anybody. Mike, that is the spirit of murder. That's yes, murderous. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. They're, and they're, willfully so. They're, they're doing this willfully. Yeah, they're complicit in the murder of people, and, and they can't. There's no 
righteousness at all. I don't care what they yeah. say. Well, I have a yeah. righteous oath to follow and follow the story. No, you, you have a yeah. right. To, you have to do the right thing at all times. No matter what profession you're in, you don't get a free pass because you're part of the press and you just can't help it. That's crazy. So we got the same thing going on in government. We got people who say yeah. that they're a Christian in government and yet they will lie like a dog in front of everybody yes. and yeah. they justify and say, well, I, you know, I have a private life in Christ, but publicly I have to be, no, I'm not buying it. Are you? No, it's just like this, uh, this, this, uh, one of the most divisive subjects out there is abortion, right? Right. You can't take a stance on one side one day, flip it the other day because you found out your ratings dropped. <laughs> no. And it, 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 people should really start seeing through that. But you know what, Passball? Everybody's going to find out that one day we had one shot at this, yeah. this thing called life, and that we should have we should have come together during this time. Yep. Not further. But unfortunately... There's some bad apples that will always get in between, get get with good people to try and keep them separated. Yeah. And those, those, well, according to the word of God, they'll be gathered. To, the tares are going to be gathered together first. That's right. I believe the kingdom of the beast. All this iniquitous stuff that's happening. They're they're getting they're, they're getting together on this stuff, right? Their groups are getting bigger. Let them. Let them all jumble up together so they can be one big happy family and then kapoof, they're going to be thrust into darkness. That's, I, I believe that's part of the separation. It is not good to see. It's going to be it's going to be like pulling a scab off your body. It's going to hurt, right, to separate yeah. those strokers because they don't want to, they don't want to separate. They have a joy of, of, of perverting the righteous. Um, but it is part of the end process. And we're victorious anyway in the end. Yes. Yeah, so that's why. It is indeed a process. It's Amen. A, it's a process. Amen. So, Pastor Paul, thank you for doing what you're doing because in this process, a lot of people, if they have no clue of what's coming, even when it sounds crazy, if they have no clue, they're going to have, they're just going to be ineffective for everybody. They're, they're going to be no help to anybody. And they'll end up corrupting their own walk if they're scared enough. Because people are going to get scared. But the key is not to act on fear, not to walk by fear. Right. Right? Things scare me, but I will never make a decision by fear. Amen. Because God Amen. did not give us the spirit of fear. Right? Amen. That's right. But if a person doesn't know, they're going to be out of their minds. You they're know, that's why we have to be watchmen and um, share the truth of what's coming. We can see the sword coming. You know, we can see the enemy coming. We can see the destruction coming. And if we see it and we don't warn the people, God said he'll require their blood on our hands. Um, I don't want that. Do you, Mike? I mean, I mean, that's... Uh, I, I, I couldn't even live with myself. I don't, there's no if, way. If, if I just let a person fall into a hole, I can't do No, that. you can't. I can't do that. No, I, and that's, that's why at, that. sometimes at the end of the day, I ask myself, have I done everything I could do? Unfortunately, the answer is always no. I try as hard as I can, but I never can. Uh, do is everything that I can. I, I, there's no way. Only Christ can go all the way, and and He's carrying us. But we do have a job to do. We do have a responsibility to shine the light and to be faithful to God and to one another. I thank you for always coming on these Thursday nights. Even last week, I knew you was under the weather. Um, you know, you're always on time. You're always ready to go unless you get called away on something. And uh, you know. You're always a, a willing to share what you can and uh, be honest with the people and yet not breach protocol as classified uh, information, always doing it in a very professional way and where people can learn how to read between the lines. And part of the reason we need the Bible, because the Bible kind of there's no doubt about it. The Bible has the answers and we just got to take a look at some of the things happening and how that applies to the Bible. When you said Joel 3, it's about to happen. I 1000% put an amen on that. It's We're going to see this happen. It's already happening, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. It, that, that process, it looks, it is, uh, it's becoming more and more, you know, uh, prevalent. Is, is World War Three already, are we already in World War Three, Mike? Personally, I think we are. In most wars, 
uh, in the global wars. They were not, most people did not know they were in the global war, right? Yeah. Uh, World War Three happened before Pearl Harbor. Yeah, before okay, Pearl okay, Harbor. take it that we far. We were drawn into it, and that's when we recognized you know, there was a big problem out there. Well, right now, the USA is not part of the Middle East as far as what they're doing. But the Middle East is at war right now. Yes. Russia is at war right now. Yes. China is backing war elements right now. Iran is at Everybody's at war right now. Right. And the USA, again, has not been drawn into it. Right now, I, I can say this also. Um, I do not desire another event that looks like Pearl Harbor. But no. for some reason, we don't wake up until a big alarm clock goes off, right? We don't, right. But I, I suspect that if we do not respond out of pure humanity, right, and, and to fulfill our role, because I believe the Lord set the United States just where it is, yep. not with all the evil stuff. But yeah. if we weren't here, if we know this world would be... Oh, it would be it would chaos. Be It'd be murders. It'd be... It'd be... Uh, God, it'd be an unstoppably... Horrible and evil. Yeah, it's bad yeah, enough. Worse. And, yeah, and, uh, I believe if we don't stand up to that role that we're given, right, the Lord's going to wake us up again, just like Pearl Harbor. And unfortunately, it takes uh, it, it takes a, a pretty good pounding Amen. to get us to wake up and to work together to get beyond our differences. Amen. It is unfortunate, but that's what happens. So, All right, Mike. You on back? I think it was around February nineteenth. You, it's kind of the end of the broadcast, I believe it was last week, and you said, in about 40 days, uh, we're going to be talking about, there's, there's going to be an event. Can you elaborate on that? Is that part of the... I can. You can? I can. I can. I can't. Okay. I can't. Okay. I'm sorry. I can't. But, but, but past all, these are, these are going to be heavy times. But we're going to know. Let me ask you this. Remember last week? Remember last week, that little comment I stuck in there, you said something about Putin. Yeah, and yeah. I said, yeah, Putin's a nice guy unless you're, you know, you're his opposition. Yeah, I know. And, and then, then what happened? And then that guy died the next day. He, he was killed the next day. That was awful. Yeah. Well, Mike, when you said you can't, I appreciate you saying that. I'm saying that I'm asking this. We'll probably know what that is then when, oh, yeah. when yeah. this takes place. We're going to talk about it on this show as it as it um, as we get close to that basketball yeah. because uh, – well, no. We have heavy, heavy things on the way. We have heavy wow. things on the way. Wow! And I, I just pray people are prepped and ready. I'm really ready. You know, really ready. Folks, every week you should be here on these Thursday nights and tell others. I mean, this is the time I think to really tell other people to start listening in. People who've never listened before. I think in the next three weeks leading up to this 40th day process, plus beyond that, people need to know that. Uh, there's things happening that's affecting eternity. I mean, eternity. It's on the line. Lucifer is trying to dethrone Jesus Christ, and we are in the middle of it. And we can decide which side we're on. And people need to know some of the events are going to happen. I had a dream where I seen the blood running out of people's faces. Let me tell you, and I, I shared this with you guys two years ago. And it was because they Russia revealed a weapon, and the people that were there, they were diplomats. They they women were crying, and men looked like ghosts because of some type of weapon. And now this is before Russia invaded Ukraine. Mike, you remember me sharing yes, this? I do. I even showing you a picture of some of the uniforms they were wearing, and you said, "Oh, those uh, you knew what they were, NBC type," but. I, I don't know if Russia has this weapon I've seen in the dream, but whatever it was, it it's, it brought men to their knees and to the, run the blood out of their body. Is Do you think they have such a weapon? Putin is so confident because he has not shown his hand. Putin right now, if I were to say it, it was it would sound terrible, right? But if... But if I could describe Putin, I would say he has space dominance right now. I know that flies in the face of quite a bit. I know. Right? But it's true. But Putin has not shown his hand. He hides bases very well. Wow. And then his, um, he has not used anything modern that I've seen in any of these conflicts yet. He's not yeah. used it. So he's holding back. He's holding he is, back. He's using everybody else's stuff. He's not utilizing his own equipment. 
equipment. If he were to pull out some of that equipment, you know, first of all, it, it, nobody would actually be able to see it because he has uh, he's gone far beyond, you know, but, but in, uh, he's pressed physics all the way to its limits. Let's put it that way. <laughs> he's got he's got some of the greatest scientists in the world and uh and they've got um some of them have devious minds and so mankind is uh is going to suffer from that no doubt about that mike uh what are we going to be talking about next week i know we ain't to the 40 days yet so but what are we going to continue to see the sun blowing up or what are we going to be talking about well it'll be solar related um eight minutes it takes for a pretty good burst to reach earth but then there is another effect that takes probably within a 24-hour range earthquake uh, for example the atlantic ocean right when that last one went off just a little bit ago uh in the atlantic there was a deep they have probes down there right they check for ultrasonics there was a deep vibration in the ultrasonics now this happened right before certain eruptions and so here we have those ultrasonics again those folks in Haiti and Shelley, uh, Lord help them, because that's, that's a very volatile place. Haiti could actually shake totally apart. And this time, I mean, absolutely and totally apart. So we should Chile be uh, is the same thing. Right? So, and of course, if Chile falls, Chile and Peru and those places fall, we don't have the stability of the Cocos plate. And if that yeah. cork comes out, those in California, well, you know the rest of that story. So these these solar flares, the massive X flares, the pressure they're going to put on the Earth, we better watch the next 72 hours maybe. There could be a massive earthquake. Um, it's possible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. And and again, BP Earthwatch, he made, he made people on the Internet realize that. I thought that was awesome. He did. Yeah, that's he right. He made people realize that because he wouldn't let that go. And so hopefully he's listening and he won't let go of the well, fact that every I think time he's... we have a solar flare, <laughs> that there are ultrasonics that begin to go off, causing um, uh, a heightened uh, anomalistic area in the northern pole and the Atlantic to cut up and get bigger. That's going to be a big problem. Well, I, I would say I know for sure he's watching right now. And he sent me an email 19 minutes before I went live to let me know that there, this X flare had happened. Um, so I'm sure he's listening right now and he'll start looking into where the vibrations are. So I'm glad. I'm really thankful he did that. I think he really, uh, helped wake up the world. Now people are taking it serious that earthquakes follow major solar flares and, uh, wow. Yeah, but, do. Haiti and Chile, I will be watching and praying for these folks. Yeah, they have no, they're not prepared past Paul for that. Mike, I appreciate you coming on tonight and uh, giving us a great broadcast tonight with great information. Thank you for doing it for the cause of Jesus Christ to help people find the Lord. My honor, Pastor Paul. Well, the honor's always mine. Thank you. God bless, brother. God bless.